Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Red Circle, also the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and turn the notifications on. Also, check out Off the Floor, Winnow. That's with two N's, winnow.app, backslash off the floor. Text directly to your phone from the hosts of Five on the Floor. $3.05 per month, free for the first week. Also, check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network, Prize Picks. Use that code 5 F I V E. Get in for this football weekend, NFL, college football, it's all there. NBA will be on there soon as well. Use prize picks code 5, F-I-V-E. Go to prizepicks.com, the Google Play Store, or the Apple App Store. This is the official fantasy partner of the Five Reasons Sports Network. And now, today's episode. Down the gang. Yay. Yes. Uh, five on the floor, ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing, you can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck the said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor plan, got an all band. Y'all seen the block, stop with one hand. And Pat, we trust, it's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. I got Greg Sylvander. You can follow me at Greg Sylvander. I've got Alex Toledo. You can follow him at Tropical Blanket. We hope that you caught up with our Jimmy Butler week episodes. We got one more to go, but we're going to squeeze in Something else on Dame Lillard because the news directs us that way. Make sure you also check out the episode that was put here on the podcast feed, which was essentially a 35-minute monologue for me on the Dame Lillard situation as of Monday. And we basically took it from playback where we are often and interact with all of you. And we put it here. So we use the first 35 minutes there. I'm not going to rehash all of it because I'm sure that most of you have heard it. But as we go through the news of the day, that's starting to trickle out as we're getting closer to camp. And we anticipated that this would be happening. Uh, and today is what? September 15th, isn't it? Isn't that the date that I said all along that I thought that things would start to get moving? Well, today is ah, you're September 15th. So we're starting to hear the rumblings behind the scenes that lead you to believe that there could be movement here. But again, I'll go through what I've heard as we go through with some again, again much of which some of you have heard, because I haven't heard a whole lot new in the last five days. Which is why, as Greg, we start here. I think some of the stuff that came out today is BS. But let's go through it uh, kind of one by one. And let's go to the first news item, which we really didn't cover. And this was actually very good reporting by Sean Hyken in Portland because I was planning on asking the same thing of the league, and I just never got to it. This new NBA rule, which essentially is trying to get players to play, star players to play, it applies only to guys who've made an all-star team and all-NBA team in the last three years, which, by the way, does apply to Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, not Kyle Lowry, because he uh, was an all-star last in 2020, uh, and also, of course, applies to Dame Lillard. So this essentially is going to try to legislate away some of this, you know, uh, you know, what do we call it? load management, uh, things that the stars do that when fans go see their favorite player come into town or something like that, their favorite player doesn't play. So essentially you can't rest both. You can't rest more than one. It's at certain points of the year, mostly late in the year, also for the in-season tournament. But the question that I had, which actually Sean Hyken went and got the answer to was, does this affect guys who are kind of told to stay home? holding out perhaps, or being told to hold out. And we have talked about that possibility that we expect Dame Lillard to go to camp because it does not make sense to get the NBA involved in that way, but to just not be a happy camper to be available to the Blazers. But we also said that there's the possibility that two sides could kind of work out a deal where maybe there's a strained hamstring and you stay away from the team for a while. Essentially what Hyken found out is the NBA is not going to allow that. How do you read it and how does it affect the process? Because it does, it did seem to me like another small leverage push in the Heat's direction. It's interesting because some have actually taken it the opposite. I'll read the tweet. It's from September 13th. Um, Sean tweeted, I checked with the NBA and the new rule against long term shutdowns of star players. Uh, and I think that there's something related to um, nationally televised games with that too that they're going to hone in on but anyway let me get back to quoting and was told it doesn't only apply for end of season tanking here's the thing theoretically it could prohibit say a player with an outstanding trade request from being asked slash agreeing to stay home 
So what he's saying is, is uh, at least how I absorb that is Dame and Portland could agree to stay away from each other and the NBA could intervene and say, basically, I, on behalf of the fans and on behalf of the broadcasts, Dame needs to get his ass in Portland and y'all need to at least be civil and professional enough to um, have him there while this is getting worked out. I just don't see that that's going to be a situation where the league's going to want to get involved in that way. Because to us, when we were talking about Dame and the organization mutually agreeing to that, that felt like what the NBA would like the like that the fact that player and org are working together to come to a decision, I feel like that would be the NBA's that's the least messy way for this to go. So for the league to then come in and stop that from happening, I I, I do not see this as any change to the way that Miami would operate or think uh for some reason that Portland would say, okay, this is good. We'll bring him into camp. And the rule says that he has to come. I just don't see that. Do either of you see that? Yeah, Alex, go to you on that. I mean, wh- wh- how do you think Portland plays that in that case? Yeah, no, I, I just don't think that them, again, I know we've talked about this endlessly, and this is, you know, a, a new way for us to talk about this, but I don't, it doesn't change my stance that them holding down uh, you know, with Dame and, and trying to drag this into the season until they get whatever, you know, it is that they're looking for in a return. I don't think it's going to be beneficial for them, especially with this rule or not. Like, if I'm understanding that right, that means he's going to have to play. Maybe he doesn't have to play much. You know, if there's like a loophole, you know, with like, you know, a quote-unquote long-term shutdown, right? Maybe he plays like one out of every three games. I don't know how they're going to handle it. I, I don't, but I don't think it benefits them. That's That's where I come down on it. I think there's a chance that he hurts himself, which won't help anybody, right? It's not going to help the Blazers. It's not going to help the Heat. It's not going to help Dame. Um, and I, also just the idea of, uh, again, it's, it's going to be ugly. It, dragging this through the season, through media day, and and everybody knows the deal, right? Like it, it's been the most public kind of, or one of the most public and and, and obvious and loud trade demands in, in, in a while, right? Uh, you had the, the KD thing last year, which was big, but just it, it's gone on for so long and, and, I think some of the the glimmer gets taken away from acquiring a, a star if you it drags on for seven months before, <laughs> before you acquire him, right? But just in general, I just I can't find the benefit for the Blazers, right? And in, in dragging this through the season, even with these new rules, like I, I just think like the one thing you can say, right? If you're looking at it from a Blazers perspective, is like, okay, we're gonna be bad either way, which I, I definitely get. But I, if you're like a team that's trying to you know, you're going into that full rebuild mode. I understand you kind of have your foundation there um, with Scoot, but you want to give yourself the best chance at getting the best prospects because you're going into a complete full rebuild. And I just don't think playing Dame is going to help you there. Even if you're still a bad team, you're, you're not even a playing team. You know, you want those you want those lottery balls. You You need as many losses and as many games to give you know your young guys those reps i, I just think they're you're you're doing that two track thing that you, that you referenced before ethan and i just i don't see the benefit for them i really don't i don't see the benefit either there's too much risk that you're running here and the other problem that's happened here and we'll get into some of the other reports because it plays into it is i think that the longer this goes the more that's leaked about how portland's mishandled it it does not reflect very well on the blazer organization and it also makes it look like the Blazer organization is going to ultimately be end up being taken advantage of because they don't know what they're doing because uh, they don't have one voice running this as the Heat does. And again, that's something I discussed on, on the pod earlier in the week. It, it seems to be multiple voices, whether it's from ownership or the front office side. They're not they don't seem to be aligned that they know what they want. There was a report that came out today. And was this Aaron, our friend Aaron Fentress, essentially, or was this Mannix? So he was on a, They were on a podcast together. I'm going to take a look at this, but again, follow our friend uh, Drew Starr, who was on the podcast with us, and he has been transcribing a bunch of this stuff, although he didn't transcribe anything I said on Monday. What are you doing, Drew? Um, But here we go. He said, essentially, I'm going to try to find the Fentress clip. Um, This is this is I I have it here if you want. I I have it. It's a quote from Chris Maddox, who's who seemed to be wish casting, you know, yeah. uh, uh, you know, he's based out of Boston national reporter does have a relationship with Spo, but he has seemed to be wish casting for somebody else to get involved in this process until it seemed that even he gave up the ghost on this recently. And of course the heat are very aware that the Boston media and the New York media are not fond of them. They, they've told me that repeatedly, uh, but this comes in here 
quote from Maddox on a podcast with Fentress. There is, isn't a team interested in Dame's contract at the moment, Maddox says, which is always the qualifier that we're getting from others. I think Kevin O'Connor was the same. Bill Simmons has been the same. And again, it's wish casting out of Boston that some other team is going to get interested. So Fentress, who we've had on the podcast here and has become kind of an enemy of, of Portland fans, because he, even though he works out of there, because it seems that he has taken Dame's perspective on this. But again, there's logical reasons to take Dame's perspective. Ventures replies, Miami's interested. So Maddox replies, and again, this is all according to Drew underscore star, but they're one out of 29. There's no other teams out there that team out there that's interested. Right. We've made that point repeatedly. <laughs> we don't see a team. We've done a podcast on this, trying to find that magical team. I've talked to heat officials who have also tried to think of what that magical team is because they want to know what they're up against. And they had a kind of a similar list to ours, except maybe they threw in Utah because Danny Ainge is unpredictable and Dame has ties there. But they can't even. It's it's forced to find a team. So anyway, Ventures then replies, you just said if they play the season, teams are going to show up wanting Dame. Um, this is this incredible wish casting fallacy that's come up as if all these other teams are going to line up once the season starts. They don't know if their teams are good enough now that adding Dame can help them or they don't know if they have a hole at point guard. But they're going to go gut their franchise for a top 75 player who just, by the way, is 33, 34 years old and going to be making uh, $63 million in the last year of his contract, Greg. You know what I love about this is that you're starting to see from the, the national guys because Ventress went on with Mannix, and I love that you call it wish casting. That's mm -hmm. cool. I, I don't know if you made that up or not. Probably people are going to laugh and say, oh, no, that's a term everyone knows. But that's absolutely what it is. And uh, Fentress did a great job of of keeping Chris Mannix on his toes. Shout out to you, Aaron, throughout this whole thing. But also this, Locked On Blazers, Blazers Uprise, Eric Brandt specifically, like all of these Portland-based shows are all coming around to things like what we opened with about the fact that, um, you know, if Dame can't, be sent home portland's going to be up against the rules that was uh a a quote from uh mike from locked on blazers i don't i don't have his last name in front of me then eric brant says that he that cronin wanted to trade dame basically played hardball about the list of teams and said we'll send you for the best offer to which dame was you know angered by and then basically went back and said, well, now it's Miami or nothing, and I, I'm going to be vocal about that. I just feel like the fact that you're hearing it nationally, because we haven't even got to someone else who spoke about this. We'll do that in a moment. And all of the Blazer side are starting to come around to these different ideas of why a deal is – going to happen or needs to happen because of how messy things have been handled. To me, it's pointing to we're getting closer finally. Yeah, it, it definitely does seem uh, that it's getting closer. And again, this is about the date that we thought it might. Uh, Alex, we're going to get to the woes stuff after the break because I think that's where this is headed. Uh, but I, I do want to comment on one more thing here that I, I believe this is what Maddox said. I'm not sure I'd have to actually play the clip because – I've been counting on on Drew to 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 transcribe all this stuff for me, and and obviously, uh, you know, sometimes a little translation is going to get lost. But are you talking about uh, where Manning says that he thinks uh, there's going to be another team that pops up for name? Yes, he has said that, and then he's also said, and, and again, this is uh, this comes in here, and I'm I'm going to assume I'm going to play it here, just go and make sure. It, yeah, it's Manning. Okay, there we go. Okay, so he basically said <laughs> two ventures. You've used that word loyalty that Lillard has shown to the Blazers. I don't know if I'd call it that. I was in Vegas when they gave him the extension. Yes, it was on the surface, Dame committing to Portland, but it was also Dame in his late 30s getting $100 million tacked onto his deal. It does seem like there's a bit of a pivot here to try to making Dame seem like the bad guy for not uh, for, for taking the money when he was going to ask for a trade. But that, again, ignores what even the, the Blazers podcasters are now saying, which is that – not only did Dame clear with the Blazers about what they needed to do, but that Cronin essentially lied to him about what he was going to do. And that's just bad faith. Like if that's actually what happened and look, we weren't in the meeting rooms, we don't know, but it certainly seems like that. And then there's the second part of that that came out from again, those podcasters, which was okay. And I, they don't seem to be wish casting here, which was that as they were going through the process, 
Dame was open to including more teams, okay, which might scare Heat fans a little, but we knew that Brooklyn was a possibility and and maybe there was someplace else he might be willing to go. But then basically when Cronin uh, said, well, we're going to, we're going to do what's best for us. He said, well, screw it. Just Miami. Um, does that change in your view, Alex, the way that you view anything? Cause it does seem like this is going to end up being a, he said, he said situation to try to see who was the bad guy about signing the extension and what happened after. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad that stuff is coming out again, as always shout out to Drew star. We probably mentioned his name like 10 times already on this show, but as always, he, he's doing the, you know, he's doing the 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 heavy lifting here when it comes to giving us stuff to talk about. And this is actually something because, um, you know, I guess shout out to the Blazers up, Uprise guys. Uh, it would be cool if we had other people just kind of confirm this as well. Because if this is true, that he was down to maybe play for however, you know, X amount of other specific teams here. And then essentially said to the Blazers after after they said, you know, we're going to do what's what's best for us basically telling them, okay, well, I'm just going to pick my favorite option then. And you guys can kind of, you know, to censor myself, screw off. Like if if you're not going to, you're not going to play ball with me after everything I've done for this city and this organization, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to play hardball myself and I'm going to say the, you know, I'm going to pick the best situation or, you know, my favorite situation, me being Dame in this case. And, and that's it. It seems like that, that if that's true, like it doesn't make the Blazers look any better. And I know it kind of, I think some people have maybe soured on Dame, uh, you know, people outside of Miami, of course, uh, as far as like personality wise, all this stuff coming out in, in public. I just think he, you know, if if that's really true with Cronin, like how wrong is Dame to react that way? You know what I mean? Like, because at, at some point it does seem like there was a lot coming out that basically the promise was when they signed the extension was that they were going to try to build the team around him and 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 be competitive and be a playoff team around him and it's gone the complete other way. We we've, we've talked about it already, but you know they they drafted his replacement, drafted two 19-year-olds at the time that they were drafted and traded away guys who were helpful in the short term and just completely, you know, threw away the chance of them even even being a playing team and again head started their rebuild. So they've already not come through on the promise in the most just you know in, in the most obvious of ways and then they follow that up by not playing ball with dame when he finally asks out after people have been asking him to do that for years so i just think it, it doesn't make them look good and like you said ethan it's wish casting because you know all there is now is waiting waiting for something to change and for one team to sell themselves on the idea of going all in and giving up more assets ultimately than the heat would for dame and i it's really tough to come up with one the, the one that i come back to that we haven't really talked about much um that hasn't really been mentioned either but it's just kind of me thinking of, of, of like teams that make sense is the pelicans mm -hmm. but i just don't know no we've talked about the pelicans greg, greg and i and brady went through the pelicans and i and i've I suggest, I know, but it's just like a team that's not really mentioned much in general. Like, it's, well, and I mentioned has, them to the Heat, and I, I mentioned them to the <laughs> Heat, and and no, I did. I, I I went through the list, and and Philly came up, and then there was kind of the, okay, if Boston, the Lakers, or Bucks get desperate, or a guy gets hurt with those situations, as there are championship expectations, and then and then another one, I said, well, then there's that other group of teams, you know, we've talked about, which is like the Pelicans, Utah, or OKC, who, you know, own the draft for the next six, seven years and could trade a lot of picks if they want to accelerate their timeline. And honestly, the only one that I got any kind of a reaction about was Utah. Um, I don't I don't get the sense that the heat that the heat are afraid of OKC. I, I would say the Pelicans, most of the three of those, because I know Griff's aggressive and they do have a timeline that they need to accelerate because they need to figure out if Zion's it. And if they can keep him happy and healthy there. And so if you brought in Dame and maybe you trade Ingram and you end up with Dame and CJ back together, you kind of have Portland East, but with Zion provided he's on the court, but I don't know. I didn't get it. He's gambling. That's, that's, that's what it comes it, to. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. A if, you're tr if it's a calculated gamble, if you're trying to keep Zion, um, but no, I'm talking I, about Cronin gambling with the Blazers now, like hoping that one team is going to. Yeah. Yeah. But, but need some competition. Right, but the but the heat there is no obvious team. I like I said, the only mm -hmm. one that really came up was Utah. Um, and that's because Danny Ainge is so unpredictable, would love to screw the heat. And there are um 
there, you know, there's, there is a reason, uh, you know, Dame has ties to that area as well. So, uh, you know, th- that, that could be a possibility, but again, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense for Utah to accelerate that much. And I mean, if you're Dame, if you go there, are you any closer along? Who are you playing with Laurie Markin and then what? Um, so it, it doesn't make a ton of sense. So after the break, I want to get into the IG posts, uh, the Dame reposted and then took down. And then obviously we're going to talk about, um, ESPN's front office insider, as they refer to him regularly. Do you want to mention a couple of sponsors of the five reasons sports network, our friends over at Biscayne Bay brewing We're going to be there on Sunday night. It's in downtown Miami. It's right over on first. It's real close, real close to the arena. So make sure you check it out. We're going to be there starting about seven o'clock dolphins. Patriots starts at eight 20. We will have giveaways again. You will get a free beer again. If you mention five reasons A nice little crowd there last week, we had some fun and obviously it was a great game. Dolphins should win this one a little more handily, but we'll see. So make sure that you check it out. Uh, we're going to be out there Sunday night, starting at about eight 20. This of course is an independent uh, locally owned brewery. It's great beer. They got a great little food menu there. Um, I rec I, I recommend uh, the short rib was excellent. They it's just it's it's a fun place. It's a good place to, to be. Um, come check it out, Biscayne Bay Brewery. Also want to mention Better Edge. It's our gambling partner right now. If you if you go there, go to betteredge.com. Use the code five RSN. You get twenty dollars to play. We got a ten dollar contest. Um, beat Tony Schwartz this week. A lot of people beat Sean Rochester last week. Beat Tony Schwartz. Go to betteredge.com. Use code five RSN. This is legal sports betting. All right, let's get to the Dame thing first. Uh, the IG post. Have we sorted this out at all, Greg? What What did he do? Um, just to be super ridiculous, we'll go through it. Um, it appears as if what happened was, um, someone on Instagram, No Limit Baca. Charles Lewis Jr. is what his name is. I mean, we are going down the social media internet sleuth roles throughout this offseason, y'all. He basically posted on his story um, something about Dame being a, let me get the exact words for you, future heat legend soon. And Damian Lillard amongst posting a bunch of people, uh, giving him props for songs and just all, all kinds of different stuff. One of them also was this, uh, and then it was deleted. So he reposted basically the story of this person who said future heat legend, Damian Lillard soon, um, and then deleted it shortly thereafter. So that that's your uh, fun social media uh, clip of the day. You know, once it was cupcakes years ago. Now it's Instagram stories and reposts. And and we listened for album lyrics with Dame and none of those came out. But uh, so that's the social media side. I think it is interesting. The fact that it was quickly posted and then and then deleted um, because I've heard from a number of people that Dame stays pretty plugged into his own social media. So yeah. I think that yeah. that's not like somebody he pays no. to, to, no. to post. It's not Magic stuff. Johnson. No. Yeah, exactly. That's a good <laughs> reference. So, so, um, so that's that. I just think maybe he made a, made a mistake in posting it too quickly or just got a little too, um, you know, uh, he was just feeling himself in that moment and wants it to get done. But maybe what we hear next from Woj also alludes to why he's posting that. All right. So I'm going to read the Woj quote here and then I'll let you guys weigh in on this. And I am really proud of Miami heat fans at this point on heat Twitter, because I think we've helped educate all of you about who represents who uh, in the media. And Heat fans are skeptical now of anything that comes out of ESPN or ESPN's primary insider about the Miami heat. And we have been trying to say that for a while. Um, Everybody has their own sources. I give credit to everyone for having those sources. We know which organizations tend to talk a lot and which don't uh, and which maybe talk more to the local guys and the national guys or vice versa. And we have tried to steer you along the way to say that when someone reports something, you have to look at what their relationships are. When Chris Haynes was reporting stuff related to Dame, we said, okay, Chris is a Dame guy. He makes no apologies about that. That was his first like star relationship in the NBA. Chris has gone on to big things now. Mark Spears is a guy that the players trust. He's had a relationship with Dame for a long time. Mark Spears is from Oakland. Dame Lillard, Oakland. There's a relationship there that's gone back a very, very long way. We have told you that when it comes to the two primary NBA insiders, Shams tends to be more of the player guy. 
And again, ESPN refers to Woj as a front office insider. That's not accidental, okay? And also there is a relation, there's relationships out there as well where the Blazers have someone working in their front office who worked for ESPN for a long period of time, who's now in a prominent role up there. And we also know that Woj had a very strong relationship with the predecessor to Joe Cronin, who was Neil Olshey, okay? So this comes out today. Uh, Woj has been very silent about this situation for a long time. I mentioned on playback on Monday and we put here on the pod feed that the Heat and Blazers have had no material conversation since right after Summer League when the Heat asked the Blazers, what do you want? And the Blazers could not tell them what they wanted. Okay. And basically said, we're not going to give you a roadmap. And so the Heat were like, well, we're not going to devalue our own players by saying, hey, take this guy or take this guy or take this guy. And then it gets out in the social media space and general public. And it looks like the Heat are making desperate offers for Dame Lillard when they don't need to. Right. That was the, as of Monday. OK. And maybe things have changed over the last three days. But as of Monday, there had been no material conversations, nothing of note, nothing that moved the needle, nothing about exchanging players since right after Summer League. OK. Which is now like mid-July. We're talking about two months now, okay? And there's been silence from ESPN's primary insider who we kind of got the sense was putting out what the Blazers wanted him to put out before. So this comes out today. My sense, this is on NBA Today, I'm assuming, uh, yes, okay, on ESPN. My sense is that the Blazers have done a lot more talking with teams in the last 10 to 14 days than they did in the month plus prior. I think Portland, excuse me, what they've been trying to do is see how they can put together multi-team deals that would get them the assets they want. Okay, the second part of the sentence is important, all right? It is, it is. The second part of the sentence is important um, because that still implies Dame to Miami. Yep. And so I, I'm going to apologize because I even misread it the first time when I said I, I do don't too. I, when I, I said too. yeah when I said I don't believe this, so I'm going to actually uh, I'm going to try to correct the record on that because I do believe that Portland may be doing that at this stage. Again, I I presented everything from the Heat perspective. I don't think Portland's had material conversations with the Heat, but Portland it would make sense for them, Joe Cronin ownership etc. to go see what's out there to see what the Heat players can be used for to accrue for them, right? So I don't think that's totally implausible. But the fact that this gets out there now, and I, I love – I'm just going to read some of the quote tweets because Heat fans are onto this now because I said this two months ago. And, and I'm going to say again without patting ourselves on the back too much. When I've spoken to Heat officials about our reporting on this, we've been 100% dead on on everything. And basically the national media has caught up to us. OK, and it's been a slow moving train of them catching up to us week by week by week by week, seeing what was obvious. We're not geniuses. OK, it's just obvious. There was no market for Dame Lillard. Like, and, and so we were skeptical of anybody telling you something different because the Heat couldn't see it. We couldn't see it. But it just seemed to be, as I said, a bunch of wish casting. OK, so this comes in from Kareem Ron 33. We've we, we reached the Woj spin it, so it looks like Portland tried their best stage. This will be done soon. I literally used those exact same words two months ago. This is the game, okay? When you have a relationship with the front office and the front office is compromised when they're trying to make a deal with a player, with another team or whatever, but that front office leaks to you because that's part of the information trade game, you do your best to put them in the best possible light, okay? And so I predicted two months ago that we're going to get a tweet from the NBA insider, from ESPN, eventually when this deal is done, the Heat will end up giving up a player that they knew they were going to have to give up in the first place, okay? It's not going to kill the Heat franchise. The Heat have told the Blazers, we're not gutting our team, okay, for a 33-year-old who's making $63 million in the last year of his contract when you have no other offers, okay? They've made that clear. But at some point, when a deal is made, it will be spun in a way to say that, and here's my prediction tweet, and uh, and and you guys can jump in on this. After searching the league for the best possible deal, Joe Cronin was able to extract one, uh, you know, additional pick <laughs> currency out of the Miami Heat. 
So maybe it'll end up being a couple of second round picks that some of they get from someone or a couple of pick swaps, uh, you know, by staying with the process to this point and ultimately doing right by one of the greatest players in franchise history, Dame Lillard, period, end quote, send tweet. That's going to be fantastic. I can't wait for that. Oh, that show is going to be great. Yeah, but does anybody right. does anybody doubt that that's what's going to happen? Like, no, this is, and you know, it'll be also something, something like this. It. It'll be like, uh, something to the degree of. Then he'll follow it up with another tweet that says, "Miami feels great about their chances with Caleb Martin still on the roster, but mm-hmm. understand that they had to pay finally." Uh, with promising young rookie from FIBA or promising young uh, FIBA star Nikola Jovic and rookie Jaime Jaquez, who no one else would talk about, but now all of a sudden they'll become prized possessions. You know, like the offer is going to get a little bit of lipstick put on it as well, and it'll mm-hmm. be positioned as if uh, Miami had to finally pony up, and they may actually pay more than we've all thought, but I don't think it's going to be a ton more than it's we all thought. It's not going to be more than they thought. Do you understand? Correct. Maybe it's not going to be more than they thought. That's the important thing. They know what their threshold is. You understand? They're an aligned organization. They know what the possibilities are. They know the teams that might be out there if they need to move a player for a pick. They know all of this, and they know where they're willing to go and where they're not. And this is going to be spun, as I keep saying, in a way that it makes it look like Portland masterfully played the heat into getting additional assets when Dame put them in this horrible position, but they wiggled their way out of it. All hail jail, Joe Cronin. Yeah, it's, just Exa- it's exactly job. where we're headed. Alex. Congrats, you're fired. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because that's where it might, where there's like all of this might end, but. I, I mean, you might you might hit it word for word, Ethan. Like that tweet might come out verbatim, the, the one that you're describing there. I gotta find my original, Alex. I got, I know I have it there. Somewhere. It's really good. I gotta it find good. my. It'll really also good. be the first paragraph of the article that then gets tweeted, which is yeah, just yeah. fantastic. Yeah, the the two paragraph article. Yeah, uh, you, you really nailed. <laughs> you really nailed <laughs> Woj's voice there uh, in that tweet. It's an amazing job by you. But no, I do think like again, because things have been so bare. Um, for the past month or so and as you know as you've alluded to before everybody's off in august right like august is like the nba's we're done month right like nobody for the most part seems to be at work you know maybe some nba players are you know they're getting in their their daily workouts but for the most part everybody you know is is on vacation and not us like not yeah yeah we're the we're the only numbers to hit we had numbers to hit we didn't have a choice no exactly we're still the, the season never ends for us, but no, no, in all honesty, like just the fact that this is moving along is exciting, right? Like the fact that Woj is seeing that this might happen with you know Lillard ending up on the Heat is exciting because it, he hasn't really pushed that at all throughout this entire thing. And then you know you've got the the talk that maybe for the past two weeks or so they've been you know gauging what they can get from other teams as a part of a bigger deal. Um, I, I think that's something, right? It's not like this a, a huge news nugget but it's something then and that's my stance on it this is something because in in reality i I do think Woj wouldn't be saying that for nothing right like i I think as you guys are saying he's kind of building up towards that like oh this you know joe cronin working his way out of this tough situation right this young executive (laughs) after you know unfortunate circumstances with the ownership a few years ago and dame asking out and doing this public trade request with only one team in the market Look at all these things he got. Like it is, it does feel like they're building up towards that sort of like like Leif said, putting um lipstick on it, right? And all of a sudden the 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 garbage trade package, quote unquote, becomes a a, a good one. Yes. And yes. I think yes. people start realizing, like, okay, the fact that, you know, the market was one team, maybe you should be happy if you get three, four picks, a young prospect and and well, of- Jovic, Jovic playing Jovic playing well helps that narrative too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know yeah. that that that. By the way, I found it. You ready? And I just quote tweeted. God, we have literally been stuck in this space for how many weeks? I tweeted this on July sixth. July sixth. Today is September fifteenth. Two months and nine days ago, waiting for ESPN tweet. Dot dot dot. Quote with all stacked against him, comma. 
brilliant new Blazers general manager Joe Cronin was able to extract blank. I'm going to say it's going to be an extra second round pick, two pick swaps, or maybe they end up throwing in Jovic with Hawkins. Okay. From let me start again then. With all stacked against him, brilliant new Blazers GM Joe Cronin was able to extract blank from the Miami Heat and still do right by franchise icon Damian Lillard and send him to where he wanted to go, Colin, Miami. And then my commentary at the bottom, it will be something the Heat have no issue sending. End parentheses. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network.